Yo. What up? All right. Um, so, uh, we got another one from Shane Gillis. Hmm. Okay. The great Shane. Yeah. What we got? This is his SNL monologue. Ah, dope. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's highly anticipated. You Very know, his excited. Return. Yes. yes. Yeah, the SNL. Yes. Okay. I, I heard we got a Trump um, sneakers, but I haven't seen it yet, but I heard we got one. Okay, Trump sneakers. I think I, I saw a clip. I saw the uh, Limu, the Emu Limu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, right. I haven't seen the monologue, so this All is... Right, um, man. Can't wait for this. Let's go. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane Gillis! Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm here. I, uh, most of you probably have no idea who I am. Uh, I was actually, I was fired from this show uh, a while ago, but if, you know, don't look that up, please. If you don't know who I am, please don't Google that. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, this is, I, sh I probably shouldn't be up here, honestly. I should be home. I should be, I should be a high school football coach. That's what I should be. Like God molded me perfectly to be a high school football coach slash ninth grade sex education teacher. <laughs> All right. But that is, <laughs> that is what I want to be. That is, you know, I can feel it. It's in there. It's like my true calling. And you feel, you know, I can feel it. You know, I'm getting older. It's passing me by. You know, like my biological clock is ticking on this stream. You know how like, uh, you know how, like when a, a woman's biological clock is ticking, she sees like a baby in a stroller and is like, oh my God, your baby. Like that's how I am if I see like, like a big 15 year old. I'm like, oh my God, look at the size of that kid. <laughs> With the right coaching, that kid could be something special, I'm telling you right now. I actually, I come from a long line of coaches in my family. My, uh, my father is actually a volunteer assistant girls high school basketball coach. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually here right now. Can you get him on there? Yeah. Oh, snap. There he is. Okay. <laughs> There's my dad, the volunteer assistant girls high school basketball coach. <laughs> I thought it was funny. All right. <laughs> You don't think that's funny to bring my dad here to make fun of him for being a girls' high school basketball coach? All right. I thought it was great. Never mind. Thought that was gonna be a big hit here. Uh, now my mom's up there with my mom. I'm not gonna make fun of him. My mom asked me this a lot, and it's kind of an intense question. My mom asked me, she's like, "When did we stop being best friends?" And she's right. We used to be best friends. You remember that when you were a little boy and you like you loved your mom and you thought she was the cool. You remember when you were gay? <laughs> you remember when you were just a gay little boy? Every little boy is just their mom's gay best friend. There's literally zero difference. I was gay for my mom. She would pick me up from school. I'd hop in the van. I'd be like, girl, oh, tell me about your day. <laughs> I thought she was cool. I'd listen to her music. I'd be like, bam, 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 bam. Let's go, girls. <laughs> I would dance for her. <laughs> Look at my little dancer. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, my mom asked me when we stopped being best friends, and I don't, I don't have the heart to tell her because, like most men, I know exactly when me and my mom stopped being friends. It was, uh, it was the first time I whacked off. <laughs> uh, before, before that, you're like, oh, where's my mom? I love my mom. She's so cool. One nut, you're like, when's that bitch gonna leave the house? <laughs> I have so much business to attend to. <laughs> uh, I hope I can say those words on TV. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my whole family's here, so I'll talk about them instead of anything else. Uh, talk about my family. I'll tell you this. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you can tell by looking at me, but I do have family members with Down syndrome. <laughs> it almost got me. Huh? 
It's funny, it's funny. Look, I don't have any material that can be on TV, all right? I'm trying my best. Also, this place is extremely well lit. I can see everyone not enjoying it. This is, uh, you know, just the most nervous I've ever been. Don't clap now, shut up. <laughs> No, I talk about, I brought up Down Syndrome. You, got, you can always tell who's never been around Down Syndrome when you bring it up. Like, if I tell people, if I'm like, yeah, I have family members with Down Syndrome, people that have never been around it are always like, oh. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's the end of the world. Like, oh, are they okay? Are they doing? It's like, they're doing better than everybody I know. <laughs> they're the only ones having a good time pretty consistently. They're not worried about the election. <laughs> they're having a good time. <sighs> My niece... <laughs> My niece has Down syndrome, and uh, I thought that was going to get a bigger laugh. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were allowed to have fun here. Uh, but no, my niece has Down syndrome. It's a funny thing that happens when someone in your family has Down syndrome. It goes, when you, my sister was pregnant, everybody was like very, very scared. And then once, you know, once they come into your life, you realize that's easily the only good member of your entire family. It's crazy. And then your family gets like too proud. Like now, every single day in my family's group text, it's just pictures of my niece. And every day, somebody else in my family comments, she looks exactly like Uncle Shane. see it a little. And there's no denying it, she does. She looks like me with bangs. <laughs> Just happy. <laughs> but my sister, my sister, my niece's mother, she didn't know she could get pregnant, so she, she foster cared and then adopted oh, three black shit. kids. And then she finally got pregnant, and now she has a kid with Down syndrome. And uh, her husband is from Egypt. He's an Arab guy. You go over to their house, it's like getting in the craziest Uber pool you've ever been. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like, how did you guys meet? This is... <laughs> but there's something, I don't know, my niece, one day, I'm not saying it's like something I'm looking forward to, but I think it'll be a nice thing uh, for the whole country. Uh, I would say when my niece is probably in like fifth, sixth grade, out at recess, and some white kids out there are like, hey, you're not allowed to play with us, you're retarded. And then uh, three black kids come flying out of nowhere, <laughs> wailing on that cracker. And we're going to be like, oh! It's like a nice moment. <laughs> yeah, you guys can set cracker. Uh... <laughs> no, we, uh, my family and I, we actually we opened a coffee shop in my hometown for people with Down syndrome to work at. And uh, it's going, don't clap. <laughs> I didn't do it for the claps. I did it, uh, you know. It's going exactly how you think it would go. <laughs> it's doing well, actually. Lying around the corner every day. Not because there's like a ton of people going, but service is. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting apple juice. We don't know how to fix that problem. <laughs> there's one thing you know. <laughs> There's one thing you notice uh, though when you work with these guys, and it's very, it's funny. There's literally, there's zero difference between us and them. And uh, especially at work, there's no difference. Every day these dudes show up to work just. <laughs> <laughs> What's your problem, dude? They're like, I hate this job so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, we've got a great show for you tonight. Uh, so, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I need to check out the skits. The skits. Yeah, I know they man. were, you know, I was, couldn't catch a live, but you know, <laughs> I'm sure he did. It's, the monologue, I think, was um, I'm trying to. I'm not want to compare it. You know what I'm saying? I think that I would give it like a rating. I would give it like a. Nine, I would definitely give it like a nine. Right. Nine out of ten. Good. Like, Good. I don't know what a 10 would be. <laughs> nah. I think he nailed it. I think, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He didn't shy away from who he is. No. This nigga talked about what he wanted to talk about. He talked right. about what he talks about in his comedy. Mm -hmm. That's right. what Shane Gillis is. Right. It made it like, um, 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's definitely that's who SNL assist. didn't want at first. <laughs> right, 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 right. He, de- he definitely, yeah, yeah. He definitely came in. It felt like it felt a lot like a comedy routine. You know what I mean? I, I think he spoke on it just enough. You know what I mean? And just you know, just kept smooth on selling with it. You know what I mean? It was yeah. it was a great uh, it was a great monologue. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they nicked me. Right, right. So I was dodging it. <laughs> but it happened to nick me. <laughs> niece looks like him with bangs. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Oh, man. It looks like Shane in the movie. Oh, man. But yeah, I can't wait to catch these endless uh, Trump impersonations, man. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah, man.